Well, got a little bit of snow for New Haven. This is a lot. It's not a lot of snow, but I gotta clean it up. One car, two car, uh, and then get to work. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode. Hey, fucko, what's going on? We're gonna be doing some maintenance on the Tahoe. I got rear brakes to put on it, redo the front brake, front right caliper that I replaced. I gotta clean the guide pins. I guess I didn't do a great job. We're gonna be putting some heavy duty shocks on it. Beyond that which is known to man, it is a dimension as vast as space. Drugs are bad. You shouldn't do drugs. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode. Uh, tonight's going to be relatively short and simple. Doing some maintenance on the Tahoe. We're going to be doing rear brakes, rear shocks, uh, some heavy-duty shocks, and I'll show you in a minute. We're going to be putting an air-fuel ratio gauge in. Already got the bung welded in there, so we're just going to run it. And uh, That's pretty much what tonight's video is going to be. A little bit of... Uh, a little bit of content for you guys. I'm trying my best to get out when I can and record when I can. It's just challenging to get out and record. That's all it is. So uh, tonight I got to do work. I got the camera. It's charged. We're going to record a video. Hopefully we have some fun. I hope you like it. And let's get to it. Up first, we have the rotors and pads for the rear. Got a hammer and brake clean. That's all you need to change the brakes on these Chevys. Just as simple as could be a two or three pound hammer, two and a half pound, cheapest brakes you can get. I got these on Marketplace. I got all four discs and rotors for 200 bucks, brand new from EBC. Is it good? I don't know. It's good enough for me. Got the uh, Hobo Freight tools, all the little fittings I'm gonna need. Some more stuff over here. This is cool. These are the shocks just sitting in some batteries. You know, those to go handles really do come in use, come in, come in real handy. So I got these big old shocks for it. Uh, these are spring assist, actually upside down. These are spring assist that I believe they're for a 2,500. The guys buying them are for like their Yukon XLs and Suburbans. But I figure since I do put a lot of weight in this, and I constantly run with a couple hundred pounds in the back. Better to run these bigger shocks. So hopefully, this fits, I don't know. I mean, we'll see if we run into a problem, worse comes to worse, we just won't put them on and come up with a better plan with that. But these are going on tonight, hopefully. Brakes are going on tonight. And lastly, we a little 12 volt tester, some dormant terminal kit, uh, terminal kit, and then AM, Performance Electronics. We got a fancy little AFR air fuel ratio gauge that I'm going to throw in for tools tonight. Oh, <clears throat> before I get into the tools, oil change, Castrol GTX 10 W 30 conventional oil Wix filter. That's all you need. So impact, I got the half inch impact flex that should do anything. And I'm pretty sure it's fully charged 24 volt. Got the cobalt econo mechanics toolbox. And then an assortment of Milwaukee tools, some bits in here, another three eighths impact, some cool stuff in there. Look at this. Look at this. O'Reilly Auto Parts, 1967 Ford Mustang GT500. Now, isn't that, isn't that just sweet?
So I got the caliper and the caliper bracket off. Who would have thought this is seized on a little bit? The backing plate is totally rotten. Got the bottom bolt out for the shock. Now I gotta run the top out. Gotta get an extension to go around up and around there and run that out. Put the new shock on and then we'll pay this right in off. The kitchen. All right, hammer, check. Eye protection, not check. Quick scan for eye protection. Eye protection going once. Eye protection going twice. Eye protection sold to the blind guy in the back. Don't wear eye protection. Go blind, be a man. Give to Adam Pass! Hey, go oh, see that's Pass! coming over right off. There we go. This is... Yeah, this is gonna have to come right off. So as much as I'd like to have the dust shield, that's not doing anything. Slide right on. Yeah, no problems at all. Just touching this a little bit. How about this? Let's let's remove a little, a little bit more, a little bit more. But how much noise is that going to make? It's probably going to make all the noise. I don't care. Here's our shock that came off. Gabriel, Gabriel, Gabriel Ultra G-Force. I don't think it's a bad shock. I'm pretty sure it's still, uh, uh, yeah, it's still shockolating. It's not a terrible shock, but it's not our shock. This is our new shock. Which way is the top? It says, here's the top. Look at that, how cool is that? Should just go. Right in there. There we go. All right, it's probably taking me way too long to do this. <laughs> but we got it. There we go. Top and bottom. All right. Throw stuff on the ground. Find my bush latte, have a drink, and uh, in the magic of time, we're gonna put this all back together. Got both sides wrapped up. New brakes, rotors, calipers are brand new back here. Hardware's back new, springs are new. That's pretty cool. Good morning, it's another day here in sunny Southern Connecticut. Wait, no, that's supposed to be so sunny Southern California. All right, I got a mess on my hands, guys. Uh, pull the, the radio out because it died and uh, the wiring inside of here is uh, a mess. Anyways, not gonna focus on that right this second. What we're gonna focus in on is this super nifty AEM gauge. It's a air fuel ratio gauge that I put in that uh, the sensor died almost immediately after installing it. And uh, I got a new sensor here, so we'll put that on. But what we're gonna focus on I would open my door, but there's so much outside, like ambient noise. Those two wires, serial output and ground, need to get connected to this little nifty device. This is called an RS-232. Uh, I hope that the camera will pick this up, but uh, these little flathead screwdrivers numbered one through 10, that corner one is ground. Basically just gotta hook up the blue wire to the serial output like to the uh, correct pin, hook up the ground, and then this means that my computer can read the AFR gauge in HB tuners. And that's what that looks like. Everybody's seen those. If you've ever plugged in a computer, you know exactly what that is, an RS-232. So I'm gonna get that hooked up and uh, put the new sensor in and yeah. So that was pretty simple. They're both in. I just gotta close this up, get it all connected, see if it works. Before we start it up, new sensor, feeler gauge to pop the electrical connector out. This is just a knockoff, it's not a Bosch, and a 22 millimeter. The new gauge is in, 
we're wired up, this should work now. I called AEM, they said not to let it heat cycle before it starts working. I mean, I know I'm rich as all get out, but 12 and a half. Yeah, she could use a little less, a uh, little less fuel. I've never had an AFR on here. I've always gone by fuel trims. The fuel trims have always been way off. I guess now, uh, now I could tune it properly and see what kind of power it actually has. I'm sure the mass airflow is also messing with the transmission, which is pretty wild. But yeah, it is, uh, it's richer than Bill Gates right now. We're at 14 and a half to one. It's been like that since I put it in drive. It's in closed loop or, well, open loop, whatever. I'm always confused, my dyslexia. But the O2s are now in control. Uh, and I could tell that the, uh, you know, the AFR has leveled out. Um, a couple things that I, I keep in mind with this is it's post cat, whatever that means. So, you know, the, uh, um, exhaust is being converted into whatever sodium or fucking, it smells like sulfur. Yeah. Some sulfur dioxide, I believe by the catalytic converter. So, you know, uh, 14 and a half to one, that's, that's good enough for me. It's probably off a couple points. You know, they say give two points, uh, uh, um, so 14.7, which is what the commanded AFR in the computer is by the O2s. So pretty happy with that. Um, I mean, clearly now I gotta get the long-term, uh, uh, the fuel trims, you know, within 3% across the board. I didn't try anything wide open, but uh, I am getting closer to a place where I could give her a little bit of onions. Uh, so we're gonna do like a 4,000 RPM pull and see what, uh, see what our AFRs look like. All right, let's come to a stop, almost a stop, come to a dead stop, well, let's see, 4,000 RPM. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. He's missing the bus stop, oh my goodness. Whoa. Yeah, so that was uh, a touch under 4,000 RPM, and well, I mean, I saw it dip into the 12, so it is it is rich down there, which explains why it bogs. I wouldn't be surprised if we'll see an 11 on a wide open pull. So it definitely has way too much fueling up top. Uh, I wanna say that's by design, that the VE table, the way that I have the VE table set up, is the higher in the RPM, it kind of gets a little ridiculous. Like I demand 100% duty cycle from the injectors, which on a naturally aspirated car, uh, pretty sure you never need to do. Uh, this has the flex fuel injectors as well. So like, I mean, it's it's meant, you know, 100% duty cycle for flex fuel. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's something like 22 to 28 pounds or 28 to 32 pounds is the difference between a regular injector on a LS3 versus the flex fuel injector. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I gotta test out, see if the computer connects. I gotta finish this wiring, put a little shrink wrapper on it, make it look, make it look like I care just a little bit.